Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Today we're chatting to Anne Ashworth, the previous winning of the winner of the Comrades Marathon and the current race and operations manager at Comrades. Anne was also one of the founding members of the Easy Equities Born to Run Running Club back when it was called Born to Run. Um, and can correct me on the dates, but about 2013, 2014, the club was formed. So thank you so much, Anne, for taking time out of your day. I know it's really busy with the upcoming Comrades coming. We'll be speaking about it just now, 44 days to go. Um, and getting some time with you just to chat about your history and everything going forward. So thanks. No, no problem. Thanks, Sean. It's always uh, it's always good to go back to your roots. So um, yeah, it all kind of started with Born to Run. So that's uh, yeah, it's exciting. Uh, and it's it's really exciting for me to talk to you and talk about the Comrades Marathon. I come from a family that is uh, just loves Comrades. I was brought up on it. My grandfather ran fourteen of them, and my dad completed twenty six. I mean, my measly two is small, but. You know, I love I love being there. I've loved running them, and I, I hopefully I can get to ten in in the future and join a little bit of my family <laughs> it, uh, heritage there. Um, I know the comrades started um, in 1921, Anne, um, and it was yeah. very small. And we've missed a few years um, because of the war and COVID. So I know that 2027 is our hundredth year. Um, and that, just to start before we go into your history, I know that as race director, it's an awesome role, so congrats on it. And I just wanted to start by saying, since you've taken the role, how have you found it? What what maybe have you changed and looking forward to the 100th Comrades? What are your plans going forward for that? Yeah, so um, I think I should probably emphasize that I'm not, um, I'm not an RD. I'm not a race director. I don't have any race director experience. I'm not even involved in event management, like I'm just a lawyer. Um, and so coming into this position has been a massive, massive learning curve. Um, and really the only thing that I've been able to draw from is my experience as an athlete um, and kind of my experience in managing a running club, different running teams, coaching, et cetera. Um, so I think, um, yeah, I think I've been really shocked, actually, and this is going to sound stupid, but I've been really shocked at, like, how much goes on beyond, behind the scenes. Like, you know, just for my, put up an arch on race day and say, bang, go, you know, it's like, there's like a truckload of stuff that happens behind the scenes, like stuff that, like, you just don't even think about. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, comrades, the comrades has a full-time staff. We have nine full-time staff members. And... It's not like we only work January to June, like genuinely it is a full time job. And then obviously January to June, it's all hours of every day and weekends, etc. So I think I've just been really um, o not overwhelmed, but really just impressed by the enormity of the race and the race management and organization, how many elements there are to it. Um, and. I've also been really impressed by how business orientated the race organization is. So the race runs as a business and not a profit mating business because we are a PBO and an NPO. Um, but, you know, we are looking at in income streams and revenue and then we have very strict budgetary constraints and we have certain targets that we have to make and we reinvest um, you know, any surplus for the long-term benefit of the race and all those things. And I've been just really impressed at how business-oriented the event is. Um, and, yeah, that's also been a big learning curve for me. Um, yeah, so I think just coming on, I mean, I've been here just six months and it's like, sure. Um, but, yeah, hopefully I'm kind of coming to terms with all of it. Um, and, yeah, we we six weeks about to go to race day. and. It's our 97th race on the 9th of June. And basically, we, not we, me, <laughs> four-year plan, which I'm hoping to be able to implement um, towards the 100th running of the race in 2027. So basically, we looking at putting the race um, kind of on par with major international races in terms of our athlete offering um, and the ultimate race experience. And then basically, um, it's being scaled over four years. So this year, You'll, you can expect to see massive changes at the start, for example, and then very noticeable changes en route, but I haven't made huge changes to the finish or the prize giving or race week or anything like that. But as we kind of move towards the 100th, you can expect to find um, like 
basically, I'm going to call it a festival of running. So comrades will not be one day, one race. It will be basically like a week long um, thing where you can have like charity fundraisers, one night with the stars, pasta party, marathon Monday parties, um, you know, a lot more elite engagement, more international ambassador engagement, possibly um, other races. So we've had quite a few requests to have like a 10 and a 21, um, you know, kind of incorporated in that. So none of it's set in stone. All of it has to get passed by the board. But kind of that's where we're going is to make it a really world class international level event, um, kind of up there with gold status events in terms of your runner experience. Um, and then also we're forging a way forward with things that have never been done in South Africa before. So, um, for example, we are introducing ladies only toilets at the start, finish and along the route. We um, are providing sanitary items for ladies at those points. So it's eight points along the route for the first time. That's in direct response to requests by women. I'm not aware of any other race doing that. Um, this year, for the first time, we'll have wheelchair athletes starting at five o'clock from the front of the race. That's never happened before. Um, we streamlining our prize giving. Um, the race finish um, is a simulated street finish. So it's not a street finish this year, but we're testing the layout of what would be a street finish to see if it works logistically. So we're doing a lot of testing and changes this year to see kind of how we can make it bigger, better um, in the years that come. That's amazing, and 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 um, just going back to when you started that, talking about coming from an athlete perspective and and going into the race directly, not normally organising. I think it's amazing you coming in from the athlete side and bringing in this perspective of the athletes. But I'm sure there's massive things behind the scenes that you weren't aware of. As like also the athlete myself, not sure what happens behind the scenes. So that's awesome to learn. It's awesome to explain to people. And so don't just rock up on race day and see the arch and catch yeah. the water and carry on going. <laughs> Um, and that's awesome, the the thoughts that you have going forward. That's really cool. I mean, it must be quite a difficult balance to keep the culture and heritage of the race, but also evolve and adapt with the times and make sure we can include everyone and everything that we do. So the part about making sure the women's toilets and that, that's fantastic. And changing the race to the 10K. I'd love to see a night street finish also. That's super cool. So <laughs> I'm really interested to see how it goes and um sure that everyone listening will also and catch tabs. And so thank you. And um, I hope it goes well. Um, what I did want to ask you is about the charities of the race and the sponsors that you have, because I know a few of the sponsors are obviously people can invest in them on the Easy Equities platform. Uh, I know for one you have Toyota. I don't know if you can mention some of the others and as well as the charities you have. Mm. Yeah, so actually I'm super chuffed, but this is one of the richest races we've had. Um, I'm really, really thrilled because in COVID the race really suffered and I was, obviously wasn't here in COVID, but you know, COVID really dried up sports sponsorship um, and particularly mass participation events because of all the restrictions. Um, and Comrades really did go through a very difficult time financially and heavily ate into its reserves. And, you know, it, it was really tough. Um, we had staff cutbacks, we had salary cutbacks, like any of our sexy stuff, as I call it, race-related sexy stuff got canned. Um, and and it was back to basics on a really small scale. And it's taken a while for investment to come back, not just to comrades, but into sport generally. You could see that things like rugby and soccer got money, but it was actually very difficult for road running to get money. Um, and this year we have seen renewed interest in the sport, which is flippin' fantastic. Um, it's really exciting for not just the race, which obviously is the immediate beneficiary, but it's really positive um, at a club level and at an individual, individual level. Because where you can incentivize good performances, where you can reward good performances, um, where you can host a race that truly is satisfying the best need of athletes, um, you know, it, it kind of has a trickle down effect into the rest of the running industry. And so there is quite a lot of pressure on comrades to lead by example. But I think the fact that comrades has been able to get so much investment in the race this year is really positive for the sport long term. Um, so, yeah, we have a new tier one sponsor this year in Thirsty. Thirsty previously was a tier four sponsor. Um, it's our hydration partner. Um, but for 2024 to 2027, they've come on board as one of our main sponsors, Tier 1, together with Mr. Price Sport. 
Um, and we also have attracted a second tier one sponsor, which is still confidential, but it, an announcement will be made for the race, which is super, super exciting. Really fantastic additions to the race. Um, yeah, just all in all positive and really is that contribution is actually going to pave the way for us to just make the race so much better. Um, and not better for the CMA, better for the runners. So it's a direct pass on benefit to the runners in terms of the race experience. And that wouldn't be possible without this third um, tier one sponsor, um, which will be announced shortly. And I mean, we've got FNB, we've got GEMS, we've got RAF, um, Courier Guide come on as a VRK sponsor. Um, we've got Toyota. We've got Durban Tourism or the Etiquini Municipality. Uh, we've previously had um, investment by Department of Sports and Culture, um, which we've applied for again. That comes in the form of a grant. Uh, we've got Orange Grove. Um, gosh, we've got so many sponsors. Uh, Interflora, Bidolfs, um, lots and lots and lots of partners. Um, yeah, I think I said James already. Um, sorry, let me just go through there. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, Imperial, we, we really do have a lot. So all of them are identified on our um on our website. And yeah, it's just been really fantastic to to see sponsors getting so excited about the race, about the direction that it's going, about our plans for the next four years. Um and yeah, I think it's a huge vote of confidence in the race and the sport. And yeah, super chuffed about that. And then um aligned to that our charities, we we actually support um six charities a year and they get rotated out on a three-year basis so so nobody is there forever um they probably have about a three-year term and then they rotate but there is a new one every year so our newest uh, charity to join the comrade stable is sand parks um and wow they've really hit the ground running they've actually they are the highest fundraisers to date um so they're super enthusiastic they replaced wildlands who's having a rotation out um, but sand parks have been amazing in terms of the sale of the memorabilia um, the sale of the tickets for the winter car competition sponsored by Toyota. Um, yeah, and the I'm a BD BD, um project. So, yeah, I mean, uh, sand parks has been really, really great. But then we also have um, we also have five other other charities um, and basically runners sign up to run for charity to fundraise for them, which they do online. Um, and and yeah, all that money goes into a pot. I think we were looking at about 22 million raised. Um, I think that's right. I, yeah, I might be subject to corruption on that, but we'll take it. We'll take it as that number since you've said. Yeah, that <laughs> I might be wrong. Uh, I, it was covered in the board meeting last night, but yeah, just doing really really well. And that's that. And we also get contributions from our international ambassadors who basically do their own fundraising. And then 50% of their funds go into the AMA BDBD pot and 50% of their funds go to a local charity from the country in which they've come. So um, that is one of our primary um, places of growth in the next four years was to move kind of more towards a London Marathon type vibe and to really upscale our charity um, component and to really make sure that we're making a big difference in the communities that we serve. So um, AMA BDBD, um, money will be spent on projects and communities directly impacted by the race in KwaZulu-Natal, which I think is really important. Um, yeah, and it's just another way that we make sure that we serve the community. That's amazing. And, and I mean, I'm not taking you in your number, but 28 million, that's, that's awesome. I mean, that's giving so much back and that's that's a big part of the race. And for me, that's, that's really special. So well done. And let's hope it carries on building. Uh, you were talking about sponsors and charities and you're the crew of nine and um, at the comrades. And, you know, it just makes me think of, and it was a question I was going to ask you when we get to personal running, but the support team behind the runners, um, you never really hear about them. And they're the, like the most important part to make the runner it's uh, fast in yourself or the athlete. And those are the support team behind you guys running the comrades, making sure everything can run efficiently. And it's, it's like we don't really think about it. We just see a spectacle on the day, but they're the ones that actually keep everything going. So it's awesome to hear about them and that um, they're going, they're going strong there. It's really cool that you have Sandpox on board. We obviously have a relationship with Sandpox through. We sponsor the African Not to Trail Run and Sandpox sponsor there. So that's cool that they're the comrades as well. Really good. Um, and just jumping into um, your your running career as an athlete and going into the support crew. Um, it's one of the questions I wanted to ask you. I mean, obviously you you won the comrades in 2018, which must have been absolutely amazing. I'm sure it was a dream for you. So I don't know if you can 
touch on that and then we'll go to the support to you a bit later. Yeah, I mean, it feels like a very long time ago. <laughs> There's lots of water <laughs> under the bridge. Um, and uh, people keep telling me that I don't actually know what Comrades is all about because I'm only at the front of the race and the majority of the race happens behind me, which I think is a bit unfair. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, my most recent Comrades was last year. Um, so I did run in 2023. I've done nine Comrades in total with 11 starts, so two DNFs. Um, yeah, and both of those just as a result of injury. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not it's not an exaggeration to say that winning comrades changed my life. Um, yeah, it was never something that I'd planned to do. It was not like I was a little girl at school, like jogging around the block and being like, one day I'm going to win comrades. Like it was so far out of my conception of my abilities. It's just nothing that even crossed my mind. And even when I started training more seriously for comrades, like I would have just been chuffed with a gold medal. Like to win the thing was crazy. Um, and I could only say that it was just one of those days where absolutely everything went right. And that's such a rare, it's such a rare occurrence. Like some people never have that. And I'm just really lucky that I did have one of those days. Um, and yeah, I mean, I was rubbish as a runner before then, but there's not very much that would have told you that I could have won comrades. Like my marathon time was fine. I'd won a couple of races. It was fine. But you know, I was very much a weekend warrior. I was working full time um, and not exactly a hairy casual job. Like I was a corporate attorney working in, in big corporate law firms. Like I didn't have a lot of time to train or sleep or anything. And um, basically in 2016, um, on very, very little training, um, I started the race and I was just minding my own business until about proof on the down run. And somebody said, you're in 10th position. And I just couldn't believe it. I was like, there's no ways I can be sitting in 10th position, like Harry Casual, Johnny Come Lately, not following a serious training plan type of person. But I was so motivated by the thought that maybe I could be 10th that um, it completely changed how I ran the rest of the race. Like then suddenly I was like, nobody's passing me and like I'm in it to win it, you know, my gold medal and it like, I was no more just enjoying my jog down to Durban. Like now I was serious. And after the race, I was like, oh my word, I've never had that experience. But honestly, I just haven't been applying myself. Like if I was close to the top 10, having done like flipping weekend warrior training, like why am I not applying myself in this the way that I would apply myself in my job or whatever it is. Um, and so from then I decided to run more seriously and I got a coach. And ultimately gave up my job and started to run um, a lot more seriously. Um, and and yeah, and then and then won. And yeah, it was it yeah, it was honestly the best day of my life. And um, I can say that because I don't have children, and everybody always says the birth of their children is the best day of their life. But for me, winning comrades was like the first day of the rest of my life because it completely changed. I wouldn't be here if I hadn't won comrades. There's no way. Um, and there's a lot of things that have happened to me since that would never have happened if I just continued to be a corporate lawyer, you know, and yeah, I mean, I'll never win it again, um, but I have it and no one can take that away from me. And yeah, it's something that I'll cherish forever. A hundred percent and it's yours. And that's, that's a really special story hearing that because, I mean, it just shows to me that if, if you want something, um, you may need a turning point to show that you can achieve it. But if you want something, and if you want something badly enough, if you train for it, you can achieve anything. And that's really special that you had a perfect day on the day to get it. I still think you could have got it even if you had a perfect day, but that's that's really special. And, and you know, it's like also you're talking about illnesses and I'm sure you also had, um, I mean, injuries. I'm sure you also had some illnesses and just learning from that and you did not finish this to get to that um, gold medal, uh, the, the winning comrades. Also know that you, you spoke about you have another gold in 10th and that's, Really cool. I mean, we, we fail a lot in life and it's the times that we fail that we learn the most to make sure that we come out of it with the best. And like I say, change your life. That's really cool, man. <laughs> I'm like so excited. I got the got <laughs> it's really cool, man. So yeah, congrats. And I know I was touching on just now that you got you must have had a massive support crew behind you as you do at the comrades to get things going. And um I'm sure they had a massive impact in getting you across the line. I don't know if you want to touch on that as well. Yeah, so, you know, there's a saying um, that says it takes a village to raise a child. 
and um, it takes a village to raise an athlete. There is not a single athlete who can do what they need to do on race day or on the build up to race day alone. Um, and you know whether it was, I mean, I I remember that like if it wasn't for Woolies Food delivering food to the house, like we would not have eaten because I was too busy or too tired to go shopping from the training that we were doing. Um, but you know, like my mom, um, when she was still alive, she picked up a lot of the admin. Um, associated with managing the running club and when ultimately I left Born to Run to start Team Massmart, which was the ladies only elite team. Um, my mom stayed at Born to Run and continued to help with the administration there. Like she didn't get paid to do that. You know, she did it like as a favor to me and that was her helping me out. When I was too tired to cook in the evening, she would make me dinner. If I didn't have time to go shopping, she'd go and run an errand for me. My husband, I mean, I think that he should get a sainthood for having to deal with me, first of all. <laughs> like, I mean, because when you are tired and skinny and perpetually hungry, like you're not pleasant to be around. And my poor husband just, you know, has just been so supportive and just so kind and generous with his time. He trained with me. We used to do all our runs together. Um, yeah, I mean, he's... I don't know where I'd be without David. He's he's literally my rock. Um, and then I have I have a group of friends um, that I've been friends with for 15 years, and I can always count on them to be on the side of road seconding our comrades. Um, the ladies team, Team Massmart, we've been together since um, the beginning, since the end of 2017. Like we're a group of 20 women who support each other which is very unusual for women who are also competitive with each other to be so supportive and just so vested in each other's performance and success. Um, yeah, I have, I, I just have an incredible support base, whether it's my family or it's my friends or my team sponsors. I also was so blessed with sponsorship. It's so difficult to get sponsors in South Africa as an individual athlete. Um, I've never struggled. I've always had somebody who's been willing to give me free shoes or free kit or sponsor me a trip here or pay for my coaching or whatever it is. I've been incredibly, incredibly lucky. And then although I've parted ways with my coach, um, who I, I ran with between 2016 and 2019, um, and we didn't part on good terms, um, I would never have achieved that result with Artem. He was the first person who said to me, you can win comrades, or I believe in you, you've got what it takes. And, you know, to have somebody say that and make you so motivated and so hungry, it's critical. You can't, you can't always do it by yourself, especially when the doubt creeps in and you get sick or you have some setbacks or some bad performances. You know, you need somebody to be in your corner all the time. And I'm just really lucky that I have such a huge and strong and loyal support base. Oh, that that's amazing and, and and kudos to them because obviously they pulled you through and you could rely on them and I, I love I love hearing stories and 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 explanations like that because when you achieved the, the dream winning uh, um winning the comrades but there's so many stories and so many support bases beyond so many other athletes that never maybe have achieved that level and we never hear about them so when we hear about the ones that that were success and that it's always so special to me that it came through and just to think about the other this everyone is supporting someone along the way and kudos to all of those people out there as well um, i mean i do i do just have like a particular kind of story to just demonstrate to you how blessed i am and how i am such an anomaly is is i have a friend who when i said to them i couldn't train seriously as a professional athlete for as long as i continued to be a corporate lawyer and I needed to move to the bar so that I could work for myself to give me the flexibility that I needed to pursue my running dreams. But I didn't have enough money to last the 12 months unpaid pupillage. I had a bond and I had responsibilities like most adults. And I was like, I just don't have enough money. He cashed out his retirement plan and he gave me enough cash to get through the year unpaid without a salary. I don't know anybody else who has a friend with that kind of 
generosity and means to help me chase my dream. He didn't get anything out of it. I didn't have his name on my vest when I ran Comrades. I didn't give him airtime. I can't promote his services as anything. He just did it because he wanted me to have the opportunity to chase a dream. And that, I mean, I wouldn't be here without that contribution to my life. But I can say that I am truly, truly blessed. That, what a legend. I mean, that, that's, that's amazing. And that's, you know, they hear the term true friends, but that's that's a true mate. So that's really special. Well done to him. Oh, that's, that's cool. And it's great for you. I mean, that's really special. Um, and I just want to, um, and thank you, thank you for relaying those memories and those, those, you know, those special friends and supporters along the way. Um, I know you're running the number 453. Which is a very low number for comrades. I just wanted to touch on quickly. How, how did you get that number? Um, and on the Green Numbers Club, I mean, I have been very lucky that I've been able to run in my grandfather's number, which is three two seven six, and I thought that was low. Um, and since he passed, I got um, a special permission for you guys to be able to run in his Green Number, which is very special to me. Uh, but I just thought to touch on how you got that such a low number to run it. Yeah, that's a funny story. Um, I actually have two comrades numbers. Um, 16868, which is my original comrade's number, and uh, what is it, 4483, um, which is my new comrade's number. And basically, in the beginning of 2018, um, a friend of mine had, who had the number 482, um, had reserved the number 483 for his daughter, who he thought that he would run comrades with him one day but she is not a runner and had zero interest in participating in comrades and so never took up her number. And so in the build up to the race, he um, thought that it would be really cool if he asked comrades to allocate her number to me so that I could run kind of as part of the family mm. on race day. And so next thing I know, I just got a mail saying, FYI, you've been allocated the number 483. And I was like, yo, that's a cool number. And then I won the thing. And then he was like, well, you see, it's because I gave you the number and it's good luck. And so now it's also my number. <laughs> that's amazing. That's, that's amazing. That's yeah, really cool. Um, that's cool. On, 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 on that topic, and do you know how many Green Number Club members there are at the Conrad? Uh, yes, there are. Three, just under three and a half thousand this year. Yes, that's, that's amazing. That's really cool. Are that partaking in, in the race or is that just in, in overall? No, who are registered to race. That's... Offhand, uh, I'm not sure I could look it up for you, but I know that there are three and a half thousand green number runners taking part this year. That's, that's super special. Really cool. I mean, that, I love that, that club and it's really cool to hear that there's that many. Um, Thanks, Anne. And I just wanted to go back to the, the Easy Equities Born to Run Running Club. And I, I mean, as I said, when you started, I know it was Born to Run. So, how did the how did the club come about, um, and who was in, originally involved in it? Um, so yeah, uh, actually, I um, <laughs> I'm always just going to be a troublemaker. Um, I I got tired of the way that um, professional running clubs were being run. Um, I felt like there wasn't enough of a focus on kind of the upskilling of the really good um, club runner. So if there was a really good club runner who had potential to move into the elite ranks, I didn't feel that there was enough support for those types of athletes. Like you either had to already be very good um, or you just didn't count. And, um, and so I wanted to have a club that kind of um, almost facilitated the development of excellence. Um, whether that was excellence at an elite level or was simply just encouraging you to be the best that you could be, um, as opposed to like, you know, a drinking club with a running problem, which is a common theme. Um, and, and so I wanted to start this club with a different approach to running and a different approach to, to the ethos of the club. Um, and basically, we decided to start a club called Born to Run, which wasn't then tied to any particular location. Um, and the first sponsor we met with was Puma. And Puma was like, yeah, we love the concept, we'll manufacture your vests, um, et cetera, no cash. Um, and kind of we started the club off, um, yeah, basically with free product from Puma and from Goo. That were, those are our first two sponsors. Um, 
And then I was introduced to Carl Nolt, Carl Nolter, who um, was involved in St. Stivians because we needed a place to host our club runs from. And he said, well, why don't you merge with the St. Stivians running club? Um, and then you can use the St. Stivian facilities and, you know, we've outsourced our running club to you. So we did that. Um, and then we were trying to, we, we started having really great results. Like we genuinely had athletes who were elites and doing really well. Um, and, and yeah, just sort of approached Carl to say, you know, can you help us kind of take the club up to the next level? And yeah, Cole, Cole got us in touch with Easy Equities. Um, and yeah, it was just a really, really great partnership because we felt like, um, you know, we could provide a base through which we could encourage um, we could encourage the development of excellence. And then Easy Equities was a great partner into that because of its being in touch with the community and, you know, self-empowerment and taking charge of your own, you know, your own financial health and things like that. Like it was a great it was a great alignment. And then obviously all tied in with St. Stithian's College um, and the Ex Crusaders Club. And yeah, I mean, now I know I'm not involved in, in Born to Run anymore, but Born to Run is still going strong and it's really great. I love seeing Born to Run runners on the road. I'll often be like, yeah, go Born to Run. And people look at me like, who are you? <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Um, you know, but yeah, it's it's so great to see Born to Run athletes everywhere um, and at races and on TV. And you've got some really fantastic athletes. Ben Brimble is running up a storm at the front of Easy Equities. Um yeah, and it's just, it's really fantastic to see that the club ethos remains and that it's a group of people working together. It's not a club with a drinking problem. It's a club focused on running and being friends and supporting each other. And that's really positive to see. Thanks, Anne. It's always good to hear that the club was, you know, it sounds like it's still your baby that's now just around, you know, which is really cool that you still got ties in there. So thanks for that. Diana, the club is doing really well. We were about 80 people partaking in the Comrades Marathon this year. Um, obviously in other events, but it's it's great that we can be there um, and that we're not only based in Joburg at the moment. We have Victoria branch as well as Bob Norris manages our East London branch and a bit of the remote one in Cape Town. So it's nice to be a little bit all over the place. Um, obviously for us as sponsors from Easy Equity, it's amazing to be involved in a running club. I mean, I've relayed my passion for running on this thing. So for me to be involved is really cool um, and just giving back to the community and the people. Uh, so thanks, Anne, and I just want to say thanks again for all the time that you've given us. I know it's really busy out there with the build-up. Um, from our side, good luck with everything that's that's going on. Um, I'm sure I'll chat to you in the future, but thanks again for the time and appreciate all the comments and, and uh, the advice you've given us, basically. Thanks so much, Sean. Really great to catch up. And yeah, I'm sure that there's AT born to and members from NEC. Hopefully, I'll pop into the club teams and see people on race day. And yeah, I look forward to just hearing more about the club going from strength to strength. Thank you, Anne. Have a great day. You too. Bye. So easy.